While it's that time again, I feel like I am one of the very few people that liked Starfield. It's just the way it is, I suppose. And I'm here to just talk to you after the DLC Shattered Space has dropped to t let you know my opinion on whether Starfield is worth picking up now, well over a year later. And the answer is yes, but not at full price. I'm gonna, I, I will be honest. Now, a lot of people have a lot of beef, obviously, with the amount of loading screens in Starfield. I don't, because they last like a second for, for me on my PC, so... I know that's not the case for everybody, but for me, it, it, they don't last very long whatsoever, and it doesn't bother me. But if it does bother other people, that's absolutely fine. It's, it's each to their own at the end of the day. Now, a lot of people also have beef with the fact that the main story of Starfield isn't great. I agree, it's not. I find more fun in doing all the other stuff and all the side quests and, and, and all the faction missions and stuff. That's where I get my fun out of the game. But doesn't excuse the fact the main story is lackluster, I do agree. The Shattered Space DLC one is a bit better. They are both quite short. If you just played through both of them, you could probably get them done in about 25-ish hours. I just want to point out that people keep comparing it to post-Bethesda games, and I've completed... Like, Skyrim's main story is only like 11 hours long anyway. So, and Oblivion's isn't that long either. So, it's not unheard of that Bethesda makes quite shorter main stories but the meat of their game is more in doing all the other side stuff. Again I'm not saying that excuses it at all in the slightest I'm just I'm just pointing out that that is the case so it, Starfield still feels like a Bethesda game it still has all the markings of a Bethesda game so I'm just I'm just saying it. <laughs> There's a lot in Starfield that I really really like but the, what I dislike the most is the fact that it it still is not it's still very inconsi inconsistent in the performance area on PC like I have all my my PC rig is well above all of the recommended specs for the game and it's I still can't keep a consistent high frame rate which is crap and you cannot change the resolution because I thought oh, well, I'll just drop it down to from 4k to a to just a HD resolution and it won't let you do that the only way to do that is to go into the actual the monitor settings and set your monitors display to a lower resolution, but that changes it for everything, and it's just a ball ache, and that should not be the case. Bethesda do need to sort out the game. It runs a little better since the most recent update that came along with Shattered Space, but uh, but we'll get onto Shattered Space in a moment. But obviously, so the base game, I'm go I've, I've got many videos on this, and I'm not going to keep going over every single bullet point all the time. There are never-ending side quests in this game that you can do. They're not incredibly in-depth, they're just kind of go here, save those people, or go there, destroy those ships, or go and hunt this person, or they're, they're that kind of thing. I have a lot of fun with the Bounty Hunter-esque kind of game gimmick, so that's all fine for me. I'm cool with that. I like being a space cable or a space bounty hunter, so there's never-ending ones of that. There are loads of side quests that have been written. A lot of them are really, really cool. You can even get a job during one of them, and you can actually use that job then to just get regular money, so that's always really cool if you like role-playing to a point. There's... There's a lot of options with ship building. There's also base building, and then you can get resources from base building and sell said resources and do all that kind of stuff, which is really, really cool. There, there There's just loads. You can forge relationships with, with a, it's a small group of people, unfortunately. It would be cool if you could, with a lot of, like, choose. Like, you can recruit crew to your ship and to your base as well, which is really, really cool. There's quite a few, there's quite a few good weapons to choose from as well that you can use and you can craft and upgrade things and you can uh, customize your weapons and all that kind of stuff all the usual rpg stuff is here there is a good deal of mystery here and there you every time you move around there's random encounters which kind of similar like red dead 2 with the random encounters in that do repeat on occasion that's the same with starfield they repeat a little bit more often than they do in red dead 2 but they they are there there's the instances that you will find i'm not going to spoil and give it all away because I, I'm not, I, I don't like doing that. Why tell you everything? I just let you know there's something there and then you can go and find it yourself. There's the red line, I want to say, which is a sort of a gauntlet. That it's not a difficult. Uh, it, you just kind of have to run, press a button on a planet and then run back and then get a reward for it. So there's that to do as well. And I'm with the mods, they're adding loads. You can have Star Wars characters. You can have new quest lines. Somebody's recreated the cantina from Tatooine to go in Aquila, which is really, really cool. There's a lot of really cool stuff. There is monetization from Bethesda inside of that mod store, which does suck the donkey dick. And I wish that that was not the case and that was not there because there is some really cool stuff in it. 
I just wish that that's, that was not... I, I just wish they didn't do that, because that is scummy, in my opinion. Pure scummy. But on to Shattered Space. Shattered Space DLC is only about 12 hours long. It's a very, really, really good introductory mission, and I really enjoyed that, and then going through it. I did like it. It's only It only adds in one new planet with 50 handcrafted locations, so they're not randomly generated. So that's pretty cool. I think they had a handful of new weapons, but I don't. I, I don't think because it's meant to be. It was meant to be this great big expansion, and I don't think it's quite as grandiose as they were making out to be. Doesn't mean it's bad, of course, not at all. But I just think it. I think people should just temper their expectations if they're thinking of of picking it up. I think Starfield is a very very good RPG and a very good space game. It's not perfect, absolutely not. But it, not, not everything needs to be perfect. It is what it is. And you can get lost in it, and it can be really, really awesome. There are some reviews on Steam which have, people have got like a thousand errors in it and are giving it a negative review. I would take that with a pinch of salt. If they put a thousand errors into it, it clearly isn't bad, is it? Because you don't put a thousand errors into something that you hate. Unless it's a job and you need money. You know, that's 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 a little different. But if it's a recreational activity like a video game... If you, if you don't enjoy it past the first few hour mark, you're not going to continue playing, are you? Let's just be real. But apparently, the performance on the Xbox as well is also a bit shifty in the performance mode, which should not be the case. Starfield, unfortunately, just feels not quite well optimized yet. Um, I hope they do get it optimized, because Fallout 4 spent a long time being really shitly optimized. It's a bit better now, but it was crap for a long time, for the most part, especially on PC. But is Starfield worth picking up? I'd say yes. It, there's a, the game has a lot of content. There's loads to do. There's loads to explore. There's a thousand planets to go and ex, to go and find and explore. There's randomly generated dungeons as such and stuff that you can go into. They are randomly generated and they do repeat. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blow smoke up your ass. You will see this a lot of the same environments from time to time. More often than not, very close together. But it's not really a deal breaker for me. I like going around with a sniper rifle, shooting people in the face, and it's it has a decent leveling up system where as you level up and put skill, you can choose which talent tree you want to put your skill points into. And I prioritize all the stealth ones, and then you you put a skill point into it, and then you have to it will say like you have to stealthily kill 50 people, and then you do that, and then you level up, and then when next time you level up, you can then level up that stealth. If that makes sense. I'm not very good at explaining things, so I apologize. I'm old and crusty, so I just kind of say it as it comes into my brain. But it is not a bad game. It's not a bad game. There's a lot of people out there riding the hate train. They're riding that train. There's, I'm going to have a video coming out soon about hate in general within the gaming industry at the minute. And it is, at the moment, dialed up to 11 for hatred for nearly everything. Games need to be criticised, of course. No game is perfect. There are games that there are issues that need to be addressed within Starfield, like I've mentioned, and there are probably a lot more too. But nothing is perfect, and there just seems to be this hatred has dialed up to eleven, and it's if it's not careful, it will kill gaming in in like entirely. So it just needs to be addressed, I think, to a point. But please let me know in the comments down below what you think of Starfield. I think I can gather people who have got this far in the video. You're probably rational and sensible. A lot of people have already typed absolute shitloads of hate already uh, to, to underneath the to underneath the video, and they haven't even heard what I've got to say because I say positive and negative. I'm saying I, I like Starfield. If you don't, that's cool. I'm all for it. If you don't like Starfield, that's absolutely fine. But let's not pretend this is the worst game ever to release because it's not. It's, if it's a game that you've tried and you don't like, that's absolutely fine. There are a lot of people that are putting reviews on for Shattered Space that have no playtime in Shattered Space. So it's like, why are you reviewing a game you don't have? That seems a bit bizarre. But people will do what people will do. But thank you very much for watching. Do you truly serve his will? In the end, all will serve the Great Serpent.